The market, the cops are here doing something. Photo opportunities. The guy videotaping him. Chloe trying to find some glasses. Because she's an old lady. You gonna buy? Okay. You have money? No flies and she doesn't care about the flies. Please. <laughs> I usually buy a meatball from that girl, but not today. Phone cases. A lot of fruit and vegetable and stuff over here. You need a wallet, you need a belt. Simpsons t shirts. Is this a pet? Oh, get, get, okay. get. One, two, three, four, five. Just take all of them. Put anymore. <laughs> it's full. Thank you. 
I don't need that much. I need no I need no right there. Okay, right there. I don't can eat three kilo. trip to the Tampico market. Busy little place, not many people there today. But I come here a couple times, at least once a week and get these chicken wings, they're pretty good. They're spicy. So, that's Tampico market.
We're seven kilometers from the, 7.8 kilometers from the main road. Going through a couple little villages. A couple nice houses on this road. I think I'm the only Falung. I don't know where any Falungs live. I don't know any, where the next closest one lives. Yeah, but, you see in my kid. I didn't. I know. I didn't see any today. I see. can see the mountain today it's clear right where those clouds are right over the trees and might be able to see it up here yeah they'll get out of the way yeah see now we had rain big rain two nights ago and a little bit this morning and yeah you can see them all over in the distance over there you can see the top of that range it's where we went for the waterfalls and stuff uh, June we'll get out we got to go to Bangkok one day Is that uncle did <laughs> I could go by <laughs> This is Uncle's shop. Yeah, stop here. I go to. We got to deliver product. Mm. We went to the. Go and buy him a lot of stuff at the market. This is their little shop. Five twenty in the morning, nice and quiet. Dogs are laying in the street. Installed on the roof. Kitchen's starting to come around. Tile man hopefully finishes today. I can get stuff started cleaning up and start doing the little fine details. If you go back and look a couple weeks ago, just it's rained four or five times, a couple times real heavy, and everything is just popping now. I mean, there wasn't a leaf on that tree right there, the big giant leaves. There wasn't a leaf on that tree two weeks ago.
the struggle is keeping up with it because it, it just I mean the, the that tree right there was completely bare and in just two weeks these big giant leaves come out of nowhere almost overnight it's, it's just stunning actually but it's still a construction site so kids were over found my sand pile and spread it all out all over everywhere <laughs> so I've been trying to keep the dogs out of here just because the dogs come and lay in it and they dig in it and spread it out and the kids were here for five minutes and spread it out so what can you do all my planting material so I'll have some uh, perlite and worm compost and vermicompost and uh, have cocoa peat and, and the charcoalized uh, rice bran. So trying to find different options. Got a good rain last night, so that's the jasmine. That smells really good right now. Bought all those for six bucks. A couple of papayas right there. A couple of limes. Got those really cheap. And uh, so yeah, did my first weed eating yesterday. First cut of the grass put me a little uh, don't have gutters here so I put me a little drip edge rock put down some fabric and uh, got that cleaned up a little bit so a little every day little every day the dogs are awake Well, back down. Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, this would be a little bit different video today. Uh, a lot of people want to know what uh, what it costs to kind of live here. Um, so I'm going to kind of show you my budget. Uh, I'm on disability, so I've got a very limited budget. It's uh, the reason why I can't do a lot of the work myself, is I just can't get out on my hands and knees. And if, if I can stand up and uh, do it for you know two or three hours of work, and then I'm done. So uh, that's where I'm at. So just to give you an idea, uh, I don't know if you can see that very well, but this was my biggest expense month. Uh, my budget is about 2000 baht a month, but I just sold the motorcycle. So most of that uh, in income is $2,000 a month. Um, but this month I spent 3286 but I bought all the tile. Uh, I bought a lot of, I bought a barbecue, uh, had the counter work done. I bought a lot of brick, I bought some rock because it's starting to be in the rainy season so there was quite a bit of ex expenditure this month so this has been my highest expenses this month but uh, uh, total that I spent on the house was 68,000 baht so that's almost two thousand dollars just on the house alone so it doesn't cost much for me to to, to live out here you know I spent 14,000 baht on food for the whole month and 11,000 baht on other and that includes like my beer and just miscellaneous stuff we bought 2,000 baht worth of plants and you know I try to put my beer in the other column so um, you know a thousand bucks is 33,000 baht 
right now. So if that gives you any idea of what's what's going on. And the other thing is my motorcycle is I, I I bought my motorcycle at the best time, so I transferred all that money. It was almost thirty thirty seven bot to the dollar. So this is all set at at thirty four bot to the dollar. So actually I spent a little bit less than this in actuality. So um you know it it's, doesn't seem like much but it, it turns out to be quite a bit because if I turn this to 37 I only spent three thousand bot three thousand dollars so just that little bit saves quite a bit but I've been transferring it's been pretty stable at 34 so that's the number I've been using um, but anyway uh, that's May so I went a little bit over budget in May, uh, $1,200 over budget in May. Uh, I was right at my budget in April, and I was just a little bit over in March. And you got to remember that we have built this entire thing within that budget. So there's not any money coming that's all my living expenses that's all my food expenses phone expenses electric water everything is come is out of that so in april or in march was 2286 and i'm building this building so that was where we began that was cement april i had to go to immigration so there wasn't a whole lot of expenses in there uh, still, that was thirty thousand bot. That's a thousand dollars of expenses uh, just on building projects in April, and then in May was almost two thousand dollars in building expenses in May. So, not too bad. I mean, I, you, I mean, you really can't complain. I'm living. I lived. I'm living. All of my living expenses are only a thousand. 200 bot for the whole month so everything other than building the house is that so all right so uh let's go on let's move outside i've got plumbing projects today so uh i'm going to put all these valves in today this is for this is for the toilet and sprayer this is for the bathroom sink this one's for the uh, laundry room. These, this is for the kitchen sink. I had to buy two more, and I got just got one extra because I know I'm going to need it somewhere. And then we're going to redo the old toilet because uh, it's just so caked with all the silt and crud that came from the city water. And if you go back many videos and look at that, uh, you'll understand there's just a, the, the water coming from the well and solar from the, when it is there, it's very poor, no pressure. So every once in a while, the toilet would flush, but it's just, it, so I'm just putting in a whole new kit, new fill valve, new float valve, everything. So, uh, that's what we got going on today. I hope to set the sink. So the sink came with these little things and, and so basically there's a little tab that sits right underneath here and this is meant to grow, grab onto it. And then you set this screw to push up on the sink, which, and then on this one, you push up on the counter or whatever underneath. And basically what that does is that pulls that sink down tight. Well, trying to explain how this works and how to leave an opening and everything to the Thai people was uh, completely impossible. So what I'm doing is, is I'm going to use, even though it's got a gasket, I've got this taped off. I'm going to put some silicone in and I've put some anchors underneath the, the counter and I'm going to pull it down with uh, wire ties. So I've got a uh, wire tie set on all the, I think there's eight or nine of them. Uh, around the edge and then I'm going to put a wire tie around the the screw underneath and just pull it down and let the silicone set up and I'll just leave the wire ties underneath there nobody will ever know they're there except you 
Uh, so that'll be done. That's, then I can hook up the sink, the valve will be in, and kitchen will be open for business. I can get out the cook stove, I can put the, bring the gas over, uh, and we can actually start using it. The tile guy hasn't showed up yesterday, didn't show up today. All he's got left to do is do some grout and tile will be done. This room's got to be completely grouted. And then just his repair around the drain uh, has got to be grouted. So uh, that'll be good. So let's get to it. Uh, first thing I got to do is go shut off my main water. So this is where I've relocated all the all the pipes. So that black pipe comes from the black pipe right there comes from the pump, which is about uh, 90, 90 meters away. Comes up here to this little uh, board that I've done. So I can I have the main. I've got her mom's house, and then I've got the new house. So everything can stay on I just isolate the the new house area and that's that's all my feed to the sink uh, to the water to the water spigot on the far side and then this is the laundry room feed this is the just the spigot here that's in the bathroom we usually use to fill up a bucket or whatever and then this is the shower feed and yeah, if I had skilled labor, I could put it in the wall and all blah, blah, blah. But this is the toilet and the sink feed there. So, and then this is the feed coming up to feed the old house with the spigot. So, there you go. Back to work. All right. So, one thing I've learned is the tolerances on the tie pipe are, are not... <laughs> very close at all so I really over wrap with plumbing tape uh, it's the only way to get a good seal on these and keep them from dripping uh, if you understand the tie way is my belay um, but I just don't want to have uh, water dripping all the time so I'll take out my temporary plug Clean out the old tape. And I tried to buy these uh, little better quality connectors with the metal sleeves, but they don't help. So the plastic's just as, um, doesn't matter. So what I'd like to do is get this to end up like this or like that. So let's see how our starting position lines up. And yeah, you can see. So I kind of tried to start opposite. Let's see if we can use this beauty ring or not. I don't think so because I won't be able to connect my other pipe if I use the beauty ring. So. Well, I may not be able to use that beauty ring anyway. I mean, I may not be able to connect that. My wall clearance isn't. I may have to do a little masonry work. Yeah, I can just get it on there. Whew, that's going to be tight. Yeah, I'm going to have to do a little masonry work. Damn it. They put this skim coat, on. this is another problem. They put the skin coat, it's called skim coat, not thick coat. <laughs> they put this skim coat on and uh, when I built these, 
built these through wall connectors. I made them a little bit long uh, to allow for this skim coat, but they put like three quarters of an inch thick. And in, in previous videos, you've seen it actually like right here. You can see the cracking in the wall because they put it on so thick. And if this was an exterior wall, it'd have been a problem, but this shouldn't be wet. But like right here, I'm gonna have to, I can't even, I can't even turn the nut on this. Uh, I could put an extension on here or just chip out for this. So one step forward, one step back. I'll pause you for a little bit. Okay, so that one's installed. And I'll like once I get the sink ready to set, basically you can see. Uh, somewhere up here. Oh, right there. Right there, I got a screw. I bought some hooks I'm gonna try to replace it with. So I'm gonna, if you look up here, I picked up the sink and hadn't got those back down but basically there's a there's a black wire tie right here so I'm going to hook another one into that and then hook one around the screw or the hook whatever fits and then pull down tight and then with the silicone it should work okay so all right okay the tile guy's wife showed up at the crack of 12 10 10 30 and then started yakking at me because she didn't have water because i was working on the water but, uh i can't put that one in yet uh because there's no grout around she forgot to grout white sea cow around the hole so i got a grout around there before i can put that one in Got the doubles in for the toilet and the singles in for the sink. Got that spigot put in. Uh, I got another spigot somewhere, so I'll see if I can locate it before I put that one in. But let her do her work here. And now I got to figure out something else to do because it kind of interrupted what I was going to do. So. All right, so paint it up ground off all the weld spots and shot them with a little paint touch up paint just to keep them from rusting this stuff doesn't rust too bad uh, until you uh, cut it or weld on it then it rusts so these are these are three months old so still no rust in there and quite a bit of water has gotten up there you can see kind of the end right there got a little bit there's one of the Ting Tong boys, the crazy boys, don't go to school. I don't know why they don't. He transferred from another area and they have to pay money to transfer or something. I don't understand what it is, but they, they keep the kids out of school if they don't have to have the money to pay. And the kids are like, yeah, cool. So there's quite a few little kids here that don't go to school. And it's just really sad because they don't have any hope if they don't go to school. So that part I don't understand. But, you know, that's why I let them come over here the other day. And I try to mix in a little bit of thinking with, uh, with playing. So I did a little math with them, did a little English with them. And then uh, just did some drawing and... You know, put, drew a dog, a crude dog, and, you know, put some English to it. And they understand, so. She's cleaning up the grout. I got, did some caulking. It's getting too hot. It's noon now, so. Just put a little caulking right there on that and along that right there, so. Don't get any water behind there, so that'll be good. And looks like I might have a well, got a little bit of a drain.
drip somewhere. I'll have to investigate that a little bit more. I got a drip in there somewhere. <coughs> That floor is not going to look great in there, but at least it'll drain at this point. I don't really care. And we, uh, we sprayed this down the other day with water. And uh, this was a little low area right here, and that was a low area over there. So the water was pooling. So I was hoping when he laid the tile, uh, if he laid it pretty level, it was going to come out, get rid of that low spot. Well, it's a low exactly where it was before, so so much for that. So that's exactly my, you know, if you can level it out a little bit, I can understand for building it up. But if you're just basically going to put the same contour in the ground, then, you know, it's not low. It's just puddles, you know, less than an eighth inch of water. Anyway, well, yeah. but, all right, flowers are starting to, plants are starting to look okay, getting some of them potted up, got to get the rest in the ground and go from there. I don't really get it, coconut charcoal, but look at the size of these things, they, they were said charcoal pillows, so a Kingsford charcoal is a pillow, this is a big giant block. These things are nearly impossible to get hot. Uh, tried just starting a fire in the grill and that didn't, they wouldn't even light, even with the help of some oil and some WD-40. So what I'm doing is I'm having to put them in the charcoal. Well, I loaded up the grill. What I like to do is ring it with charcoals and then have them daisy chain you can do this with Kingford. You can light one side and line them up around the edge and it just burns four or five at a time and it follows around the edge of the grill. And then that way you can do one on this side and it goes this way. Then you have a nice slow heat and you can leave the lid on it for about three hours and do some, some ribs. But these things I can't even get them can't even I had to put them in with the Thai charcoal and the Thai charcoal slips through the grill over here so uh, I bought these and trying to make these work but I'm just gonna have to go bank when I go to Bangkok this month uh, go to Villa Market and buy some good old Kingsford charcoals and uh, they're easy to light and they transfer from one to the other really easy and you can do this kind of thing with this stuff is I mean I got it white on a little bit but then they go out so these things are too big and too dense so I got some in here in the grill and all I need them to do is stay slow and hot yeah that's getting warm uh, we'll see update later I make barbecue ribs on the grill I let her taste the barbecue sauce and the first thing she does is run to the jungle and get some vegetables from the thing so so I pulled the, the ribs out and give them a little bit of extra on the grill sauce them oh Okay, here's a sauce I sourced off of uh, Lazada, and I looked at Bolt, at uh, Big C, and they had some sauces too. So these are the little mini ribs, and then that's a the big. It's all pork, as far as I know. So we sauce that up. It looks freaking tender. It's falling off the bone. So give that a few minutes. And I got another rib I couldn't fit on the grill, so I'll do that tomorrow, and the steak. Those weren't any good. They all sucked. We threw them away. Just the bones. <laughs>